What I'm going to do is take a pencil. I'm just going to draw a center line on these braces. Those guys, and then there's these guys. I will also try to refer to the soundboard and the braces without using genders. So this brace here, usually what I'll do is I will round it like a Martin style brace. So if you take a little bit off the right, a little bit off the left, and you try to be relatively even, slowly round it. This brace here is further away from the vibrating area of the soundboard. This is the center of your tone generating s s little station, if you want to call it that. Here. The source of your vibration. This brace here, the main purpose is to keep the guitar from caving in where the neck the fretboard is sitting. That's uh, it's shaped now, but it's also important to, to keep an eye on the, the dimensions of your bases. So if you want to measure it here, let's see, we are at 820 thou roughly by about 450. So that's like 1270. So height wise, I'm going to take this down hundred thousandths of an inch because I kind of like having it so it's four hundred thousandths of an inch in uh, width and six hundred in height. Let's just take it down a little bit more. One thing that I should also do just to make it easier. So important your top is radius, so you want to make sure that you have it nicely clamped on your radius dish. You don't want to be just letting it get clamped to a flat surface because you can crack it. So uh, go back to this. This is one of those tasks that takes a while. Nice nice to have some brace carving music on. Now, if you have a lower brace and wider brace, it warms up the tone, it mellows it a little bit. But you get a fairly good amount of strength, especially for a fingerboard, if it's a little taller. But you don't want to have it so you look inside the sound hole of your guitar and you see this huge, big, massive brace, then anybody who knows their stuff's going to wonder if the guitar actually can ring. And that's, uh, that's kind of close, it's in the ballpark. So then, with the, uh, the ends of the braces here. This is one of the things I do next. But just let's see what this old Gibson plan calls for. So look at it over here. There's this uh, this spot here where it starts scooping down. That's uh, about an inch and a half from the edge there. I know this is oversized, so it might be better off if I actually measure from the X brace and mark out exactly where it's supposed to start to scoop down. I tend to build my guitars, even if they're a Gibson shape, I tend to 
built them more in the, the Martin style. So um, these braces will end up looking more like a Martin. Maybe I should say they'll look more like a Hamtone. Martins look more like yours. Yeah, totally, man. CF Martin. Got a time machine. Came to La Revere in 2016. I said, hey, Jared, what are you doing these days? And I helped him pioneer the, the, uh, the classic uh, Ditson guitar as a prototype because I, uh, you know, that's what I did. Because CF Martin needed some help. And, uh, because he had a time machine. That's why. That's why everything evolved the way it did. Have you ever met a Martin Luthier? No, I haven't. Not one. That's the neat thing about uh, guitar making in some ways. It's sort of like songwriting, you know? You can surround yourself with your fellow musicians and you can end up getting similar styles as far as the way you play and the way you write. Or you can hide away in the middle of nowhere and <laughs> come up with your own style of songs. And it's, uh, well, luckily enough, I'm not, I'm not hiding away, but I've got my, my friends in Winnipeg that build, and I've met a good number of great luthiers, but no, n not too many from the American factories, at least being in Canada, there's a different culture, but like Grit Laskin and Alan Beardsell and Sergey De Young and, and John Larvey and all those, they definitely influenced things happen. Some guy on uh, my Facebook, he was selling a Grit Laskin cactus. Yeah. And uh, I think he just, well, I hadn't heard anything about it, so I didn't really know what to think. How much is he asking? I think he's asking like four or five grand. Buy it? Grit sells his guitars right now for 20 to 30 US. Really? Yeah. By Alaskan, it's like owning a Van Gogh almost. He's he's the world's best inlay artist for guitars. The best. He's not one of the best. He is like the number one. Everybody's copying grit. He started it all. Like he's he's bananas. So I'm scooping these down. These ones are already scooped. I'll turn these around later on and I'll scoop these other two and then the end of this brace here. But then uh, this is where it gets a little bit tricky and shaping the braces because what I want to do is shave material off the sides here. Now sometimes you'll have to pay attention very closely to the way the grain runs because if there's a little bit of twist in these braces then you can get tear out. Even though you think you should be going straight with the the grain, the grain might go inwards more. You might get a little bit of tear out. So I'll use the flat side down sometimes. And if you even want to zoom in close with the camera for a second, right over here on this side, um, I just took some material off this edge here, this sort of shoulder of this brace, close to that pencil line, but down below here, this pencil line that I'm drawing, below that portion, the brace is still going up and down. So what I'll do is I'll balance it out and carve it symmetrically, but then I'll come down and I'll carve the lower portion so it's more of a, a letter A in its overall shape. And this is the way that Jean Lervé braced and carved his earlier guitars. A lot of the companies nowadays, what they'll do is they'll just profile the sides of the guitars. They'll thickness them and they'll taper them and profile and adjust them tonally by scooping them from the side. Almost it's like a two-dimensional method of carving. Um, but this is this is more the the hand-carved way. It's when you 
can more effectively and efficiently reduce weight on the brace while maintaining strength. So you'll have a guitar that might actually have a little bit more focus, a little bit more clarity, a little bit more volume, and it'll also be a little bit stronger. That's why some factory built guitars sound a little bit muddy. It's because they're not carved as, as carefully. Well, if they, <clears throat> if they had a template, wouldn't they pre-scoop all of the bracing before they glue it on? Even? Totally, it's just profiled from the sides. They oh, don't yeah. actually shape the the brace from this side to this side. They'll they'll just cut the profile. Oh yeah, sideways. And and some of them, like we can take a look at that tail over there. That's ripped apart for reference. So are the new Martins still pretty good quality compared to older ones? Well, it took them from 1833 to 1988 to build the first half a million, or the first million, whatever it was, and then the next million was in the next 15 years. So like, they're making a lot more. There's the Martin plant in, in Mexico. There's, you know, there's their D1s, there's their DR16GTs, and there's their their vintage ones, the, there's the standard models, there's all kinds of different Martin models, so yeah. I still, I love them, but uh... How do you think, the, do the Mexican ones compare? They're okay, they're they're a lot like the, the Mexican tailors, you know, they're okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's cool because it's a North American factory still, so at least we're employing North Americans. Mm -hmm. So, although Donald Trump wouldn't call them North Americans. I can't believe he's like still in the running. <laughs> Is he still in the running? Yeah, he's like doing well. Yeah, no, it's him and Hillary. Yeah, well, he's gonna be the Repu he's gonna get the Republican nomination for president. Yeah, he's gonna get the Republican. Both Hillary and Trump are scary for different reasons, eh? Mm -hmm. And Bernie just went and said support Hillary. I heard about that, which is tragic. Cause I was all about the Bernie. Oh, totally, man. Imagine we had like Justin Trudeau and Bernie Sanders. We'd actually have a progressive left government in the entire continent. It would be incredible. Hillary's just as Clinton esque as her husband, I guess. Kerr. Let's not talk politics. <laughs> So if you take note, the way I'm holding this chisel is both hands behind the blade and I'm holding it just at this such right angle that I can just shave off the material here. Have you had a brace snap off while you're doing it? No, I've never had a brace snap off. It should be fine. I'm not putting a lot of physical energy into it. The, the blade is quite sharp. So we can go through uh, some chisel sharpening as well again just to make sure that Chisels are sharp enough. So I had uh, some yellow chip marples on eBay auction. Oh, you did? Yeah. And then uh, I was in an area with like shitty internet connection. And oh I, no. I had the last bid and a minute left. And then it kept saying like one minute left and then... Somebody snagged it. Yeah. Ah, oh, shoot. They were going for cheap too. Those assassins always freak out when I go to buy. Yeah, I'm one of those guys. I'll always wait to last like six seconds, yeah. and then I'll yeah. they'll beam in the other foxes, and we'll fight yeah. for it, I guess. But it's nice when you can get something, yeah. and it's like it's not always even the price. Sometimes, sometimes it's just like it's yeah. such an odd item. Yeah, you just want to get it. Well, most of the time, that's that's why I just I would do the bidding because most of the time I'll just if it's a buy it now, I'll buy it. Yeah. And then when it's an auction stuff, I'll usually stick back because. Somebody you just drive the price up for yourself then, yeah. And, uh, get in the, you know, somebody come EB assassin and snag it up. And it's always, and in those situations, it's always something that I shouldn't be buying anyway, but I'm just trying to in the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nothing like going to the bathroom and accidentally buying something expensive on eBay, right? Jake, uh, Drunk in eBay is Oh bad. my goodness, I bought an engine for Jess's dirt bike once, <laughs> drunk on eBay. I had a seven string... Yeah. Seven string replacement neck for my uh, Ibanez. 
Yeah. And I had the Jason Becker oh. numbers numbers inlay on it, so it was the different color number fret number. And I had that on my watch list because I, I needed a replacement neck because I snapped mine. And uh, anyways, Jake was playing with my phone. And he, he was playing in a, in a game, but I, he must have got out of the game and then he was just button mashing because he was, he was probably about five at the time. Yeah. And he somehow he managed to get to buy it now and agree to pay. Oh my. What did you buy? What was it? It was uh, the, the neck, the oh, yeah. replacing neck, but I was hanging off on it because it was pretty pricey. I ended up paying like uh, $400 for the neck. You can always ask the the buyer to cancel the transaction. Yeah, because I actually uh, before I fixed the locks on the Range Rover, I was having some issues, and so I found this one uh, one auction where it, he he was asking three fifty for like all new lock sets, exterior handle, <laughs> four keys, and uh, whatever blah blah blah. And I just asked him to take two hundred dollars, and he accepted my offer. And I thought mm -hmm. there's no way he would accept two hundred dollars. Cause like everybody else was asking me like, 500, 600 mm. and he was asking 350 and I offered him two and he's like, yeah, sure. 